Hello everybody and probably welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. I think when I left off last night, when I was playing, I was in the middle of looking for withers. So I don't know if this is going to be a new part or what, but you know what? I'm not feeling too hot today. Not feeling super great. So I'm going to do my very best as I scooch forward in this chair and make a lot of noise. And uh, we'll see where we get. But also, I don't see withers, so this makes me very nervous. Um, I I might cheat a little and Something see if right. withers is around. Like, look him up. But and I'm encumbered again, as per usual. Swift as my feet can carry me. Yeah, someone said he should be at the little house, which is over here, and he was not. So I'll probably just have to go to bed. Oh, may I'm still in my armor, so maybe I do gotta, uh, like, act like I'm going to sleep, you know? Alright, let's... I'll give it a shot. Go to bed, and hopefully he'll show up. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, nothing crazy happened. Let me revive my companions. Okay, auto save successful. Yeah, your darn tootin' people have got something to say. Yeah, Lazel's gonna be like, what the frick? And I'm gonna be like, listen, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I lose Lazel. This is where I lose Lazel. This is where I lose everybody. It's fine. Withers, if you aren't here, I swear. There we go. Okay. He showed up. I need a quick word. Fate spits it just out surely the fire, does. new ally. Uh, oh, the mist. Wait. Very well. Uh, I want you to bring back. Dost thou require anything yeah. else? Yeah, what do you then mean? What does that mean? The proper payment. You gotta freaking watch over him? I need you to watch over Halson? What does that mean? That mean you kill Halson? Jeez Louise, give him back. This is the price of balance. Yeah, if only 200 coin, 200 bucks. Well, can't it? Okay, yeah. By doom and dusk, I strike thy name from the archive. Rise. Lich Lord. I know I keep bringing it up, but the Liches Get Stitches is a really good book series. And everybody should read it. It's really funny. So your confidant was a mind flayer all the Oh, he doesn't even have it at all. Disquieting. That's very true. Like it, like the rest of us all had the same thing going on, right? Essentially, um, but I've been picked out as the leader now at this point. Um, but Halson doesn't have that, so it's not his. It's a, uh, it's mine. <laughs> oh no! Uh, we still I've been okay. But honestly, yay! Okay. Surpassed the We're good. We're good with Halson. Okay, so far. Anybody hiding up here? No. How are the moon lesbians doing? Be gone, friend. <laughs> I have a darling to Look adore. at her face. I freaking It's so cute. Looking forward to a bit of rest. Yeah, sorry I keep bothering you guys. You're just super duper cute. Look at her go. Doing our little dances. Hey, you. hey, it's me. Uh, it's been a while since we connected like we once. Oh, so now we could sleep together. Interesting. Wow, what a what a paladin way to say it. Since we connected like we once did. Um, no, I don't want to talk about that right now. The emperor's offered us a special tadpole. Partial mind flares. I don't I don't even want to consider that like I don't like that idea. I do also need to respect Gale as a cleric now that we've got him 
we call, eh? A mind flayer manipulating us this whole time. Such creatures are not to be trusted as a general rule, though this one does appear to have had a significant hand in our survival up to this point. At best, an ally whose motivations remain shrouded in deceit. We should be wary of what such an alliance may cost yeah, us. Yeah, probably it cost us the entire Gizarai or whatever. Uh, well, okay, let's ask him. We've been given a rare gift about an astral touch tadpole. I can only imagine what I could do were I to adopt the biology of a mind flayer. You've not taken this power for yourself. So I can only wonder why offer it to me. I, I wasn't. I was literally just bringing it up. I literally just said, hey, we've got this thing. What do you think? Uh, join me. I'd be delighted. Though, someone else will need to watch the cook pot. Uh, <laughs> you can trade with Will. Wonderful. Lead on, then. I do need to respect Gale. So I put him put him on the squad so we can do that. Uh, is this mine? I think this is supposed to. Yeah, it's supposed to be mine, but I never get to do anything. Oh, can I sit? I can sit. What a nerd. I love it, actually. So we talked to Housen. He's carving. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Um, let's see. I love that my dog gets his own little tent now. That's adorable. If he did before, I did not notice it. So let's just make sure how Will's doing. By Balder and Bones, this is a lot to take in. Let's see if I've got this right. One, we've been carrying a mind flayer around with us this whole time. Two, it's been appearing as someone else in our dreams, cajoling us to embrace our new illithid talents. Yeah. Three, the mind flayer's been siphoning a Gif Yankee prisoner's powers to shield us from the Absolute's voice. Did I miss anything? No, it's pretty rough. Well, I don't even know what Duke Stellman and the Knights of the Shield. Yeah, it was the matter of Duke Stellman and the Knights of the Shield. What is that? How could I forget? One of Baldur's Gate's most distinguished figures, a mind flayer. Does she know he's a mind flayer? How do we take from fiction? Instead of getting rid of it. Was Will earlier? Like, was his beard getting longer? Point. And I wonder if it's like the longer you go without rest, if like he starts getting stubble? I don't think that, that would be... For a game that can't freaking tell if you've knocked somebody out or doesn't have a doesn't have any parameters dealing with, you know, one of the main companions getting knocked out and like left behind, I don't think they're gonna include, you know, some facial hair growing. I'm still bitter. It's fine. All right. Like they could have made Shadowheart come back as a cool like mini boss of some sort, or any of these companions. Like maybe Shadowheart's a bit. Like I don't think Will. We're not really gonna probably have like any sort of like you know. What is it like? Uh, headbutting with Will, Lazelle though for sure. I could definitely see headbutting happening with Gale. Um, uh, maybe Carlac, but I don't know. But. There's, I feel like you should have instances where it's like recognize that you may just want to knock somebody out and uh, like leave them behind. Like maybe not killing them should do something, and it doesn't. And I'm bitter. Your parasite communes with Lazar. Ah! <laughs> races as she learns of the events inside the astral prison. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlakith would destroy and Voss would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. How come Gith hasn't interfered? Like, did she die? I can't remember now. And like, I think she must have died. Yeah. And then like, Vlakith is like, yo, it's me now. But I thought Gith was like a goddess, kind of? Or is Vlakith only that? Cause it's like, why would Gith just let this happen, you know? Um, a 
mighty prince, a mighty powerful prince, if he can block out the illithid hive mind. We already know the answer to these, these, this question and this question. And even more powerful still. It said he could bring a thousand Githyanki to their knees with one command. Listen close. The Empress spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Lacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Oh, Tiamat bad. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith oh. remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlacketh our ruler. The first oh. of many. It is Vlacketh 157 whom my people now call Queen. Oh! One five, and they kept track. One, not just 157. It's like 157, which somehow makes it even more impersonal. Yeah, that's a lot of black. This is crazy. They worship the current Blacketh, but they were like, "Yeah, she's only one of many." It's probably like a title more than anything else. But now we have, now we have, I, I literally an answer to the question I just asked earlier about where's Gith in all of this. It seems like she's imprisoned with Tima. I would, I would bet that she's there unwillingly. And, uh, or she had to trade to, like, stay there. And then, like, they would get the dragons in return, you know? But, like, maybe she can't interfere, like, even to save her son? Like, wild. 157, that's a yes. lot of lackeths. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus oh! was, is... Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlacketh I. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshas teach us. Yet the prince of the comet's been with us, subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlacketh's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. Uh, what happens now? We leave us in the city, and we obtain the key to freeing Orpheus yeah, from his well, prison. Yeah, well, did you not hear the and part when where Voss spoke? He spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our gay slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words. And they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyank here to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. Yeah, but what our brains? I talk what about, about Orpheus. I mean, we already kind of know all this stuff, but we'll do it. Why is he called the Prince the of the Comet? The historical slates describe Orpheus as a fearsome, terrible creature. Powerful beyond measure, and enthralled by the Geich. So mad with power, he'd smash through the Githyanki Empire and deliver the shards to his illithid masters. And glowing with such psionic force that he and his red dragon blazed a trail through the skies. A lethal comet careening towards my people. Lies, oh, yeah. of course. Vlacketh spread a false image of Orpheus as monstrous betrayer, and her knights as the butchers who sliced him through. She was right to fear him, I'll grant her that. So great is the comet, it could shatter her reign. Is he kind of like a demigod then? And also, like, now I'm like, hmm, is there something to Orpheus maybe not being super nice? Maybe, maybe. But, um... Now, freaking Lazelle's all in. She's like, oh, yeah, no, like it slide this whole time. I'm like, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Why did Vlacketh keep Orpheus alive all his millennia ago? We already the had that question answered. Loathsome, but it's right. Yep. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. A talent like that makes the prince a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? It's like a tiny, like, 
it's like a fourth dimension in there, right? It's like a tiny little prism, the astral prism, but like it contains basically a gateway to the astral prism, and we're just holding. It's like it's like a bended like dimension, like like bending reality right there in that tiny artifact, you know? It's not like she made Orpheus small. It's basically just like a gateway to a particular area in the astral realm where there where Orpheus is being kept. Why would Blackith want Orpheus dead now if he's so valuable Black alive? Is only an asset for as long as it isn't pointed at you. The means of Blackith's own end has been ripped away from her. Better to have Orpheus killed than to risk his escape. Better to risk the rise of Illithids than let the Prince of the Comet deny her the godhood she craves. Which is selfish. Who were the hostile Githyanki? They were the Honor Orpheus Guard. Orpheus is Honor Guard, loyal to the end. Trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their noble prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. They see us as Geich, tadpoled husks in the Emperor's thrall. I regret their deaths, but I pledge to live as they perished, in the service of Gith's son. Oh yeah? <laughs> Very well. Okay, apparently if I bring up that, people think I'm offering it to them. Come on. She wants us to meet. Yep, yep, yep. Listen, though, we have to... We, hopefully we can talk to Voss and be like, Listen, do you have a better idea for not being consumed by, you know, the, the absolute... Because I don't think Orpheus will help us. Like, maybe if we had let him out, we could have talked him down. But, like, at this point, I'm kind of... I don't think that's gonna happen. Anyway, I'm gonna go respect this boy. Adventure awaits. And, uh, wish me, wish me the best, because I really do want a cleric. I can always turn him back into a wizard later. Ooh, I don't know when I got this, but it looks very good for him. Good, so he's got, the, he's got an amulet of misty stuff, so that gives him what I want, which is what we had for, um, wow, <laughs> so many spells. Um, what I had for Shadowheart, which is Missy stepping him in using spirit guardians and also turn undead. There it is. I gave him the domain of knowledge. Uh, I didn't. I figured that worked well for his Mistra background, and it gave us a couple different things. But I uh, like like different from the domain trickery, which you know makes sense, obviously. Um, I. I'm totally happy with that. I've got like dominate person. We have telekinesis, banishment. I did give him flame strike because you know, as a he likes being a big flashy mage, and uh, here's a here's a big flashy mage. You know what I mean? But uh, I think I'll still keep him as a caster. I think that will still work. I'm not actually sure. I might have to talk to somebody, or if, you, if anybody sees this, or if anybody, when you guys see this, and uh, if you have a suggestion, feel free. Um, because, like, it, like if, if I should keep him in like the light armor with a with a staff, or if I should give him some medium armor with like actual. An actual weapon. Because he'll still be able to cast otherwise. I don't think the staff necessarily makes it so that his casting is better. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Let's make this happen. He's so great. Uh, I just need to get some stuff that Will has. What am I needed? In the inventory. Okay, here's Catherick's armor. At least the the chest. I can't. Okay. 
can't be moved against your will. It is pretty cool looking. It is slightly better. But I don't think I have a matching helmet for it. You know? It's very importante. I mean, my current helmet's alright. I know we'll get more stuff. I should maybe... We'll see if the... I mean, the Grim Skull just looks ridiculous. We'll get more stuff. Maybe I'll find a better helmet. But I do like to have matching sets. You know? I finally got shoes on for my basic outfit. Jeez. Alright, I've got House and Gale and Carlac who were... These were top two lover options. This was this was a cat fast coming in third. You know what I mean? I have this is this is uh, this is apparently what I've been working towards my whole life. Um, I don't know. Gale just seems like the most. We can't turn Will for me. Like I already mentioned, right? It'd be too weird to change him from a warlock to something else. Halson's Drew. No, can't change him. Carla can't change. Car she's barbarian. And she's like she's beside me in all the fights. You know, like I can't. Asterium, no, I need him to be a rogue, like, and it just fits him too well. Um, and Lazelle, I just can't see her as anything but a warrior type, you know? And so, Gale was truly the most flexible, um, simply because of his attachment to Mistra would make him an e and a caster like type, right? So, Cleric is like the next best thing to a wizard who's like devoted to Mistra. Um, because he basically worshipped her, so it made sense to me, but a paladin doesn't make sense, right, for him, especially because I'm a paladin. But, like, cleric made the most sense. Uh, and I needed a cleric, now that, um, now that Shadowheart is no longer with us. So, um, what do I freaking... I guess we can leave camp? Is that the next... The next thing to do? Is there anything? I don't think there was anything else I needed. Like, nobody had anything else to say to me, I think. Alright. But, oh, do I want Will for story purposes? And the cleric thing, might we might not need it necessarily so much anymore because we're not going to run in an undead area, but still wanted to have that in my back pocket. Let's bring Gail out for a while. It's been a while. First, though, save on all that effort I just did. And then, we shall leave. We're finally here! Outskirts of Baldur's Gate. I've been recording for 44 minutes. Sick. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised nothing's, like, jumped out at us at night. Like, when we got into Act 2, we had, like, a series of cutscenes that were, like piling up against each other like trying to romance like trying to you know have a lovely uh connecting scene with Carlac. and with that we'll go ahead and cut it off there this is again just sort of the generic outro i'm doing while i'm in italy uh some of these episodes will be a little shorter some of them will be a little longer uh, but i did my best just trying to make sure i had enough while i was going to be gone um, but I hope you all enjoyed the episode. And really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fame, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my Sapling Tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my Forest Tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in his support of me in the channel and who I truly cannot thank enough. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.